Today is an exciting day. You see, I've been absolutely in love with custom car audio and in particular adding bass to vehicles ever since I was a sophomore in high school. There's something just incredible about the experience of an amazing subwoofer system. I've had many different subwoofers in many different systems over the years, but the one subwoofer that I've always wanted to get my hands on ever since my first exposure to bass is sitting inside this box. This is the JL Audio 13W7. And to be more specific, the 10 year anniversary edition that JL Audio started making in 2011. So yes, that's right. The original version of the W7 was released in 2001. So here we are 22 years later and the W7 is still highly regarded as one of the best subwoofers available. But why is that? What makes the W7 unique and how do I plan to use this subwoofer that I've always wanted to own in an upcoming project? Let's dive on in. So to kick things off right, you know we have to do an unboxing here and the 13W7 comes in at 52 pounds. So that's going to require quite the packaging solution. Take this out here and first we need to lift out this first box. So we've got the second box here for the 13W7AE, which stands for Anniversary Edition. Now, now, if you do purchase the W7, you're going to want to read these directions here, which outline that we want to keep both this inner box and that outer box. And the reason for that is in case you ever did need to send the W7 back to the factory, you're able to easily do so by packaging it in these same materials. Inside the packaging here, they have a warning label that reminds us that we always have to connect both voice coils on a dual voice coil subwoofer. Got a registration card, some JL Audio stickers, information on the warranty, and finally, this full color W7 manual. Lift out this top protective part here. And again, since this is such a heavy subwoofer, this subwoofer comes pre-installed on a wooden baffle. And if we grab these handholds here and give it a little shake, we can lift it out of the box. I've got a towel here so that I can separate the subwoofer and wooden baffle assembly from this piece of cardboard. Set it on there, which allows us to now remove this protective plastic. And there it is, the 13W7. So here's the W7 in all of its glory, but check this out. This is really cool. They actually include a magnet protection piece. If I can show you guys here, see how that is separate there. That's actually a separate piece of plastic to protect the backside of the magnet. So they were one step ahead of me. We don't even need this towel. Now, right off the bat, you might be thinking, wait now, what the heck, where are the mounting screws? Well, one of the very first things that makes the JL Audio W7 unique is this surround, which JL calls the overroll surround. The mounting hardware is actually behind the surround, which gives the W7 the benefit of having more piston area or SD. By maximizing this dimension from peak to peak of the surround, the W7 is able to effectively displace more air and thus have more output. That's not all though, this massive surround also allows the W7 to have more excursion capability. In other words, how far it moves in and out. Once again, the excursion is related to how much air the subwoofer can move and thus more output. Also consider the fact that since the screws are mounted inside the subwoofer, we do get the added benefit of an improved box seal versus a traditional subwoofer where you could potentially have air leakage from outside of the holes. When it comes to removing the W7, I can't stress this enough. You guys need to read the detailed instructions in the manual, but I'm gonna give you guys a brief overview. We're going to start with removing the clamp ring and to do this, we use a flathead screwdriver we go down in here and this should require very little effort to pop it out of its channel. Once I've started the separation process, I can just simply use my finger and run it around in this groove here and go the rest of the way around the subwoofer until it is completely popped off. Once we have the ring out of the way, it exposes this metal O-ring. We can simply lift that up off of the surround 
Now with those two pieces removed, I can get my fingers underneath the surround here and I'm gonna lift it up above the metal lip. Now the guys at JL really wanted me to point this out to you guys. Make sure that you don't make these mistakes that it shows in the manual here. You do not want to flip the surround inside out. You don't wanna invert it. In order to access each of these mounting holes, you're just going to take two fingers and push back like that and then access the fastener. So honestly, this is super easy. Just pull back with the two finger method and remove each of the screws. In total on the 13W7, there ended up being 12 screws that we had to remove. And just to show you guys a little bit more of their packaging design here, this is really well thought out. They have through holes on the main baffle here so that you're not having to unthread from a really, really thick thickness. But at the same time, they have this separate ring underneath that actually sandwiches to this baffle board here and that's what the screws actually bite into. From a fabrication standpoint, what I really like about this second ring is I could use this as my template in order to cut out the subwoofer box cutout holes along with a flush trim bit on the router. I could just run the bearing of the flush trim bit against the inside here and transfer that perfect cutout shape to my enclosure. So definitely worth holding on to that ring for that alone, but again, remember you wanna keep your packaging materials, so I'm gonna pack all those away back into the original box. So first impressions, this thing is a beast. There is no doubt in my mind that this is definitely going to give us quite a bit of base. But with that said, it's also elegant. I like the look of the basket. It has a clean, refined look. I like the look of this outside trim ring in accent to the black of the surround. It's got this brushed look to it. Just a really, really nice looking subwoofer as well. The speaker wire terminals are definitely good and stout. They've got a nice strong spring inside them, so no concern with them letting go of the speaker wire. And they also have a nice piece of gasketing material on the inside of the flange here, so we don't have to worry about any air leaks. Now let's talk specs. First off, power handling wise, the recommended power rating is 500 up to 1500 watts RMS. And that's going into these dual one and a half ohm voice coils. You're typically going to be wiring those voice coils in series in order to present a three ohm load on the amplifier. Now the 13W7 has a free air resonance of 23 and a half hertz. I calculated the efficiency bandwidth product for this and it leans more towards being used in a sealed application. But with that said, this subwoofer can definitely excel in a ported application as well for more output. JL recommends 1.875 cubic feet for a sealed application and 2.375 cubic feet at 34.6 hertz for ported. Now no shock there that this large subwoofer requires a somewhat large enclosure, but I will say in comparison to some of the other offerings out there of a similar size subwoofer, these recommended enclosure sizes are actually more on the compact side. And don't forget that if you do need something more compact, the W7 also comes in the eight inch, 10 inch and 12 inch variety. The 13W7 has a three and a half inch voice coil and a one and a quarter inch one-way linear excursion. One and a quarter inch excursion each way combined with this massive piston size, this thing is going to have a ton of output. But the W7 doesn't just excel at creating output. Where it really shines is its ability to play bass accurately with immense sound quality. More on this shortly. Now dimensionally, the overall diameter is 14 inches on the outside, the cutout diameter is 11.9 inches and the mounting depth is 10 and a half inches. The displacement of the 13W7 is 0.21 cubic feet. And a side note, I love that they mentioned this in their manual. If you are designing some sort of beauty panel or grill to go in front of the 13W7, they give you an idea how much clearance you need to the back side of that panel so that it doesn't get in the way of the subwoofer at full excursion. Now it's worth noting that a 13 inch subwoofer is not a common subwoofer size. So you're gonna have trouble finding an off the shelf box for this. But if you're spending the money to get this high quality of a subwoofer, I'd recommend that you get a box specifically for this subwoofer anyhow. You could always build your own, but JL Audio also has some options. And a quick side note, I got to personally visit the JL Audio factory a while back and see these boxes being made and they truly do a very good job. So definitely Definitely consider their boxes if you are getting a W7 and be sure to check out that video to see their manufacturing facility here in the United States. 
We know that the W7 has the features to create a ton of output, but what design features does the W7 have to produce that bass accurately with immense sound quality? Well, first of all, we have the design behind the cone. You see, the stronger motor force and the more excursion that a subwoofer has, the more important it is that the cone be extremely rigid. One can achieve stiffness by adding thickness to the cone or making it out of a stronger material, but this usually comes at the expense of adding weight. Weight. Added weight means less efficiency and potential issues with the suspension as it becomes more difficult to keep aligned. So JL Audio's solution for this is the W cone design. This cone that you see here is actually supported underneath with a second W-shaped inner cone attached to the voice coil structure. This helps the whole cone structure to be extremely rigid while having a minimal mass and providing torsional rigidity in order to keep the voice coil alignment perfect over the long excursion stroke. Now the cone is also attached with JL Audio's Floating Cone Attachment Method, or FCAM. This method is a way of bonding the surround and cone assembly with the voice coil former and spider assembly together. This method helps to ensure that all components are concentric with each other without needing to torque the suspension, which again helps achieve better excursion control and dynamic voice coil alignment. Now you'll note that the W7 also has a huge diameter progressive roll spider, which again is key for keeping the voice coil aligned while allowing for huge excursion. And where the spider is attached to the voice coil, JL uses a plateau reinforcement method which relieves stress from the spider itself and is very reliable at high excursion. To get power from the wire terminals to the voice coil, JL uses their engineered lead wire system. Managing the lead wires on a large excursion subwoofer is always a design challenge, and many manufacturers will weave the leads into the spider to keep them controlled. The problem though is weaving the wires into the spider can actually alter the spider's stretching behavior, which can lead to inconsistencies throughout the range of motion. Also, since since the wire doesn't stretch, but the spider itself does, the wire can add localized stress points in the spider, which over time can lead to failure. So if one doesn't use stitched leads, you still need a way to manage the long lead wires so that they don't slap against the cone of the subwoofer or the spider itself. You also need to make sure that the leads don't short themselves on each other or the frame of the subwoofer. JL has carefully designed the entry and exit points of the lead wires with a support structure that keeps the lead wires where they need to be. They've also added special jacketing to eliminate the possibility of a short. Designing the lead wires in this way requires more labor and parts than a simple woven lead approach, but results in better reliability and reduced distortion or mechanical noise. Now another huge factor for keeping a subwoofer playing accurately and reliably is the cooling design of the subwoofer. The W7 has quite a few unique features here. First being a radially drilled pole piece. In a conventional design, the air between the voice coil former and pole piece can get trapped and superheated. But on the W7, this radial drilling directs air directly into the voice coil former, enhancing thermal dissipation and power handling. The W7 also has elevated frame cooling. It's not uncommon for conventional subwoofer designs to have large holes in the side of the frame just below the spider to allow for airflow, but these large holes mean a slow air velocity. The elevated frame cooling instead has a narrow passage which achieves a higher velocity of airflow directly to the voice coil and then into the spider air cavity. This also has the added benefit of the air rushing right past the upper surface of the top plate, which is commonly one of the subwoofer's hottest parts. These cooling features help improve sound quality by reducing power compression effects and again increasing thermal handling capabilities. Now finally, to keep the motor system highly linear, JL uses their DMA system, which stands for Dynamic Motor Analysis. The explanation for how they use this is pretty in-depth, so I will just summarize it and say that using this as part of their engineering process allows them to test and validate motor designs in the W7 that are extremely linear and highly stable, which results in low distortion, incredible transient performance, and ultimately amazing sound quality. 
So clearly a ton of engineering design and testing went into the development of the W7, which is one of the major reasons why after all these years, it is still widely known as one of the best sounding high output subwoofers available. I am so excited to finally have my hands on one of these and to be able to use it in an upcoming project. Which brings me to the fact that of course we wanna hear how this bad boy sounds. So we're gonna be building a custom subwoofer enclosure for the 13W7. Now, obviously I haven't done this yet, so I'm gonna show you some video from the last box build project that we did here on the channel. We're going to need to design the subwoofer enclosure. We need to build the box. We need to add beauty panels and design details to make it one of a kind. Then of course we need to install the completed project and test out its performance. So question for you guys, do you think that we should build a sealed or ported enclosure for the W7? And if you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber so that you can catch those future videos. A big thanks to JL Audio for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching and I hope to see you in the next one.